where you go inside of a city building, which is something like out of a 40s noir type movie. And Daredevil joins your team. Alongside Miss Marvel to fight some more. And even Iron Fist joins in. Who you probably remember from the Netflix series that was not very well received by most fans. But anyway, you make it through here. Fend off Hammerhead as the first boss fight. And then on to a rather interesting boss fight involving Kingpin. Yes, the same exact villain from this PS4 Spider-Man game, except this time it's in a dance hall and he's inside a car. Interesting, yes, it has a band and everything like that, just like something out of a 40s movie you've probably seen before. And before you fight him, you fight Elektra. Okay, yeah, I guess that makes sense since Daredevil's in this fight. So fight her off, and then Kingpin himself. Next up, a pagoda-like entrance. Yeah, it leads you into a pagoda jungle. Pretty creatively designed, I will say. Here you fight your way through and you face off against a dragon-like thing controlled by the Steel Serpent. Yep, you can't be a pagoda-like place without a dragon, right? Then one with Team Spider-Man. Yeah, that's right, the main Spider-Man, the Miles version of Spider-Man, and Gwen Stacy version of Spider-Man. Yep. This is what you call Team Spider-Man here, and after taking on Electro several times, you enter the Symbiote Lab. No surprise there, since that is from the Spider-Man universe. Yeah, these Symbionite things can be pretty annoying every time they latch themselves on you. Ugh, get the hell off me. And here, the boss fight is known as... Karna. Yeah, that's right. It's exactly what it sounds, and that's exactly what it is. A mix between Carnage and Venom. Pretty interesting, actually. Defeat him, and then it's back to the Guardians of the Galaxy team, and onto a spaceship, which should seem pretty familiar for most people who saw the first Guardians of the Galaxy movie, because after getting past a bunch of traps and stuff, you fight none other than Ronin the Accuser. Sweet, now we're talking. So, as soon as you take him down, onto Team Black Bolt, two rather odd-looking characters that you probably never heard of. I haven't really heard of them too much until I researched and found out they're actually from Marvel's Inhumans, which got a TV show. Which apparently, once again, was not very well received by both fans and critics. I guess they can't all be winners now, can they? And as cool as they are, they are pretty strange, I will admit. I mean, Medusa, a dog called Lockjaw, Crystal, and Blackfist, of course, the team leader that, well, the team's named after. And, yeah, basic stuff that you expect, puzzles and so forth. And a rather complex fight against Maximus. Yeah, it is pretty complex because it goes on for a pretty decent length, and it can be kind of tricky to figure out. Once you complete it, it's Team Black Bolt once again in action. And what do you know? You complete another level where you actually lead yourself right to where the Guardians of the Galaxy left off. Yeah. And they're being controlled by none other than Supreme Intelligence. Yeah, this weird looking thing. Yep. Right off just almost about every Guardians of the Galaxy character, and yeah, you hear that music? It's from the beginning of the second Guardians of the Galaxy movie. Gotta love these nods to these films, right? I mean, I mean, there's no resisting taking note of this kind of stuff. But otherwise, free them from their possessional state, and then take this creature down. On to the next part, we join again Team Thor, back in lightning action, in a Coliseum-like place fighting off multiple hulks. Okay, if this does not remind you of Thor Ragnarok, then I don't know what else does. Obviously, they're being controlled, and of course the boss in this level is none other than the Red King. Okay, simple enough. So once that gladiator tournament is won, onto an under underwater city. Yep, sometimes you're actually swimming, sometimes you're in an air shut, sealed glass aquarium-like thing. So you make it through that. Even fight a freaking monkey that loves his banana. And then the boss is Atuma. Fight him and his minions. Nothing out of the ordinary there. So after that little swim, it's on to the dry desert of Egypt. Or I assume it's Egypt, since you go to a pyramid in the middle of a freaking desert. And, well, before you get inside the pyramid, of course, you have to complete some trials. And they're actually pretty simple. Race on a camel through a set of rings. And then take out 15 enemies. Not too hard. Then into the pyramid made to go, where the team of course gets split up into two. Thanks to the big green guy, obviously. So, yep. One team has to work their way through one end, and the other team has to work their way through the other end. 
fight mummies and get back together, they fight none other than Loki and his minions. Alright, now we're talking here. So, show him how much of a puny god he is. Onto the Avengers Mansion you go for the next part, fixing it up after, well, a lot of it's been taken down and destroyed. So it's up to the team to rebuild and power the mansion back up, starting with the top of the mansion. Even have one of your characters run on this hamster wheel thing. Yeah, it's pretty silly, isn't it? You think that's silly? How about mowing the grass, which I actually found pretty hilarious. I mean, who couldn't resist laughing at that? And then finally you reach the top here where you have to, of course, fend off enemies from attacking Doctor Strange's barrier. And it plays a rather important role to the plot of this game. So, finish that mission. Then onto the spaceship that resembles a giant sword, which you've probably seen in the earlier cutscenes. The Avengers and, of course, Inhumans themselves have united into one big team. And this could be a pretty lengthy level of puzzles and enemies. So, of course, you come across the boss known as Korvac, and his minions, of course. So take him down. And then finally, the last level, that starts out with trying to disable Kang's device. And, of course, swarms of enemies that follow. Yeah, not too hard there. So, on to, of course, the final stand, where the fate of the universe rests in this Marvel team's hands against Kang the Conqueror himself. After getting through this whole entire level, of course. And then it's finally time to take on, well, the first part of the fight, which is pretty straightforward for the most part. Until, of course, he spawns enemies that you fought before, like Karnum. And even the Green Goblin joins in. Hmm, interesting. So take them out, fight him some more, and then he throws freaking spike balls at you. Damn. Then hit him some more, spawns more enemies like Torg with giant tentacles. Jesus, this guy really puts up a fight. And you think it ends at that point. Oh, it's not over yet. You gotta use Doctor Strange with his sorcery powers to reverse time. Yeah, because, well, that is one of his strong points that he uses against the whole universe. So, it's best to fight fire with fire. Have Captain Marvel cut through, and then fight him in a giant form. Wow. That is awesome. But not too hard. Just gotta follow the button commands on screen, and then the fight's over. Universe is saved, and, well, pretty silly cutscene, I will say, in the end credits. Should seem familiar once again if you've seen the second Guardians of the Galaxy movie. It's Mr. Blue Sky by Electric Light Orchestra, in case you're wondering. So that's LEGO Marvel Super Heroes 2 on the Nintendo Switch. Not much to say, it's a typical LEGO game. It may not be movie licensed, but it has a lot of charm that most of you people that are fans of the movies especially, and the comics, will find delightful. Silly, amusing, plenty of easter eggs, plenty of side quests, and the main quest itself is very fun. And I'm well aware that there's DLC expansion packs, but hey, I can only talk about so much. Besides, the main adventure itself is more than lengthy enough to keep you busy for a long time. In other words, fantastic adventure, fun, silly, graphics are great, music is great, voice casting is great, again even though it's not obviously from the movies, it's especially not only great to play at home, but as I said, also on the go because it's on Nintendo Switch. So, my final verdict on this one, rockin' Wii Remote V Motion Plus up and playing Wii Remote up. Trust me, Marvel can still be super even in Lego form. Until next time, happy gaming, and let's hope for the best out of this film. Hope it's a great conclusion to the Marvel Cinematic Universe, even though it's going to be far from over, but let's just hope it's great, which I think it's going to be, despite the three-hour runtime. That's right, people, it's going to be very long, but I'm sure it'll be worth it. Keep watching.